we are starting with matrix algebra and we'll go through a few of the basic matrix algebra that was introduced in previous years. Uh, we'll start with vectors and eigenvectors and eigenvalues from a particular matrix, also linear independence and linear dependence of given vectors. But we'll just go through them, um, then do some exercises, and then move on to state space equations and their solutions. So as part of recollection, we have to remember that in order for us to find the eigenvalues for a particular given matrix, we need to get a characteristic equation. And that characteristic equation has to be found by simplifying the determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero. And then we solve it. There are different kinds of eigenvalues that you may get. Um, they are repeating eigenvalues that are distinct and real eigenvalues as well as complex eigenvalues. Each one uh, requires a different method to get to determine the corresponding eigenvectors. So in order for us to get the corresponding eigenvectors, note it's corresponding. That means each eigenvalue must correspond to a particular eigenvector. Then we need to simplify an equation given by the determinant, not the determinant this time, but the matrix. Matrix A minus lambda I multiplied by vector k equal to vector zero. Please note that this is not the determinant, it's the full matrix A minus lambda i. Vector k will be the vector that has got the unknowns, k1, k2, k3, depending on whether the matrix A is a two by two matrix or a three by three matrix. If it's a two by two, vector k will only have k1 and k2. If it's a three by three matrix, you will have k1, k2, and k3. Note that um, the size of vector k depends on the size of matrix A that has been given. Also note the right hand side must be equated to a vector zero, not the number zero. So when you are looking for eigenvalues, the determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to the number zero. But for eigenvectors, the matrix A minus lambda I multiplied by vector K is equal to a vector zero. Note the notation is very important when it comes to um, matrices. And then this formula can only be solved by substituting each value of the eigenvalue. So you have to substitute each eigenvalue in, and then you'll get a different system of equations. And then you solve those systems of equations for the values of k, and then you'll get the first eigenvector. After substituting each eigenvalue, then you get the second eigenvector depending, of course, on the size of your matrix A. As I had noted, that you have three types of eigenvalues, real and distinct, real and repeating, as well as complex eigenvalues. Note also that you are able to determine whether given value vectors are linearly independent or linearly dependent. One way 
of determining whether the given vectors are linearly independent is that when you put them as columns as columns in a matrix and find the determinant of that particular matrix and you discover that the answer you are getting is not equal to zero then you can say they are linearly independent but if you di discover that the determinant of that matrix which has those given vectors as columns and you, 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 you discover that the determinant is equal to zero then that means the vectors are linearly dependent in other notation we call this the Ronskian that's what you'll discover in other textbooks but all you need to know is that you place the given vectors in a matrix format calculate the determinant and if the determinant is not equal to zero then you say they are linearly independent but if the determinant is equal to zero then you say they are linearly dependent note the other way of finding out whether vectors given vectors are linearly independent or linearly dependent the linearly dependent vectors are easy to see if one vector is a scalar multiple of the other vector then you are able to say they are linearly dependent what do i mean if vector one has got entries one two and vector two has got entries two four you can note clearly that if you multiply vector one by two you will get vector two so that means these two vectors are linearly dependent that's another way then for our syllabus we need the properties of those eigenvalues after you found the eigenvalues then we are able from the using the eigenvalues of a particular matrix a we can be able to get the trace of a the trace of a is the sum of the eigenvalues of a but then if you calculate the product of those eigenvalues then you get the determinant of a you are able to check the determinant of a using your calculator and then find the product of the given eigenvalues your answers must be the same note also that if you take the reciprocal of the eigenvalues of a then it gives you the eigenvalues of the inverse of a so if you just want the eigenvalues of a inverse all you need to do is to find the reciprocal of each eigenvalue of matrix a also note that eigenvalues of the transpose of a are exactly equal to the eigenvalues of the original matrix a now also if you multiply the eigenvalues of a by a scalar it means that you had multiplied that particular matrix by a scalar so all in all if you want the eigenvalues of 2 times a all you need to do is to multiply each eigenvalue of a by 2 as we continue once again now you have a 
plus or minus k times i and you want its Aiken values, the operation that you applied on matrix A, you do it on the Aiken values of A. If you had said A plus 2 times I, then it means each Aiken value will be having A plus 2. So whatever you do to the Aiken values or to the matrix, you do also to the Aiken values. Also, the Aiken values of A to the power K, all you need to do is to raise the Aiken values of A to the same power. So all in all, if 2 was the one of the Aiken values of matrix A, and you are asked to find the Aiken value for A squared, it means the Aiken value for A squared will be 2 squared. So you raise the Aiken values of A by the same power, which is K. Now we get to the next um, definition, number 8. When you're looking at for the rank of a particular given matrix, it is the order, note that, order or size of the largest square matrix that you took from matrix A, which we call it the sub-matrix of A, that has a non-zero determinant. What do I mean? In order for you to get the rank of a matrix, the first thing you need to do, calculate the determinant of the given matrix. If the determinant of the given matrix is zero, then what you do, delete one row and one column of A, forming another square matrix and calculate the determinant of that matrix. If it's zero, you continue deleting one row, one column, until you get a square matrix that has a non-zero determinant. And then the rank of that matrix will be the order of that matrix that gave you a non-zero determinant. Let's look at a few examples. I've given you matrix A and matrix B. Matrix A has got cos theta, negative sine theta in the first row, sine theta, cos theta in the second row. We are asked to find the rank of these two matrices. So the first thing we do, as I had said, find the determinant of the given matrix. So the determinant of matrix A, we discover that it is one because it will be cos squared minus minus sine squared. And that gives us cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which we know is 1. And 1 is not equal to 0. Then we say the rank of A is the order of the matrix. Remember, it is not the determinant. It is the order. This matrix was a 2 by 2 matrix. So therefore, the order of this matrix is 2. Therefore, the rank of matrix A is 2. Then we go to matrix B. B is having 1, 1, and 2, 2 as entries. It's a 2 by 2 matrix. So when we calculate its determinant, we're getting um, 1 times 2 and minus 2 times 1. That gives us a 0. So the next thing, remember, in order for us to calculate the rank, we need to get a sub-matrix, a square sub-matrix that will have a non-zero determinant. So delete the first column and the first row. Then we are left with the number 2. The number 2 is definitely 
not zero. Therefore, the rank of the matrix is a one by one matrix. So that means the order is one. Reason being two that has been left out is not equal to zero. Two is a one by one matrix. So therefore its order is one. Hence, the rank of matrix B is 1. Also, we can be able to diagonalize a given matrix using the formula M inverse multiplied by A multiplied by M. Recall that M is the modal matrix of A. What is the modal matrix of A? The modal matrix of A is the matrix that has got its columns as the eigenvectors of A, corresponding to those particular eigenvalues. And the matrix that has got eigenvalues on its main diagonal and zeros everywhere else, we call it the spectral matrix. So in order for us to diagonalize matrix A, it means we are trying to find the spectral matrix of A, which will have eigenvalues on the main diagonal. So after finding if you have been given M, which is the modal matrix, find M inverse. And please remember, in order for you to diagonalize matrix A, and matrix A has been given, then you use the formula M inverse multiplied by A multiplied by M. But in other cases, you may be given the spectral matrix and the modal matrix, or you may just be given eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of a particular matrix and matrix A not given, and you are asked to find matrix A. Then you use the first formula. A will be equal to M multiplied by the spectral matrix multiplied by M inverse. Please do not confuse the two. If you are looking for a, then you start with M and end with M inverse. But if you are looking for the spectral matrix, you start with M inverse and end with M. Let's quickly go through some exercises. Number one, A and B. Those I require from you to be able to know how to operate them. You can be able to use a calculator as well. Please recall that when you multiply a matrix by a scalar, it means you're multiplying each entry by that scalar. And then you subtract the two matrices. It means you're subtracting the corresponding entries. So entries in the same position, those are the ones that you subtract. So it means you'll have 2 times 1, which is 2 minus 1. That will be the first entry in your answer. 2 times 0 minus 0. That will be the second entry in the first column of your answer. So you can continue with this. And then matrix uh, for number 1B. This, the product of these two matrices, you can use your calculator. You can use your calculator. First thing you do on your calculator, you press mode, and then you choose matrix. I believe it's option six. And then you choose the size of the matrix. It's very important that you know the size of the matrix. Note this one has got three rows and four columns. 
so you, on your calculator you must be able to choose the correct size which is a three by four matrix as your matrix a and then you enter the entries so it's one equal to zero equal to eight equal to zero equal to i'm hoping you're noticing when you do that your cursor is moving from left to right once you press equal to at the end of the first row it goes to the second row zero equal to zero equal to three equal to two equal to then you go to the next row please note that after entering the last entry which is zero please press equal to and then your calculator will have stored that matrix as matrix a press ac to get out and then you do the same press mode matrix and then now you're choosing matrix b and then you choose the size of matrix b note this one is got one two three four it's got four rows and one column so it's a four by one matrix and then you enter the entries and then after you are done press ac again now to perform the multiplication of these two matrices now on your calculator on the numbers i believe that it's four at the base of your calculator you'll see it's written matrix so press shift 4 and then it will ask you which matrix are you recalling and then you choose the option a which is matrix a and then press the multiplication sign again shift 4 and then you choose matrix b remember you are multiplying these two matrices and then equal to your calculator will give you the answer for number 1b. As we move to number 2, your calculator is able to calculate the inverse of a matrix. Enter this matrix the same way that we did we said you press mode then you go to matrix and then you choose the name of your matrix whether it's going to be matrix a b or c and then choose the size this one is a three by three matrix it's got three rows and three columns and then enter the entries after entering the entries press ac and then recall that matrix because you want its inverse so you press shift 4 and then you recall the matrix i'm not sure what you called it matrix a b or c you choose that option and then you press the key on your calculator which has got x to the power negative 1 on it you press the key and then you press equal to your calculator will have calculated the inverse of a matrix so if now you discover that the entries given to you by the calculator are decimals you need to go to each entry the cursor must be on each entry look at the bottom the fraction if it was if your entry has got 0 0.33333 at the bottom of your matrix you'll have 1 divided by 3 on your matrices for exam purposes and testing purposes you are not allowed to use decimals as entries in your matrices you are only allowed to use fractions so make sure you move your cursor and check at the bottom of your matrix what that decimal is, rep is representing and you write the fraction mode for each entry. I'm hoping you'll be able to fill in A inverse for number two. And then for number three, 
we are asked to determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrix A. Note that we are going to solve this problem and then I leave it halfway so that you can finish it off. Note, first step is to find the determinant of A minus lambda I and equate it to zero. Note that you only changed the diagonal entries. So it's one minus lambda, four minus lambda, and negative three minus lambda from the original matrix A. All the other entries remain the same. Equated to zero, note I've written debt because I used square matrices. So immediately you use square matrices, you must write debt at the on the outside so that we know you are calculating the determinant of that matrix and you are it's the one that is equal to zero. Remember, a matrix can never be equal to a number. It's only its determinant that will be equal to a number. So notation, you must make sure that you get it right. And also revise how to find the determinant of that matrix. So um, I hope you'll be able to confirm the next steps. The determinant of that matrix equal to zero is given by that step. Please check and make sure that it is correct and note it is equal to zero. That step carries a mark. You need to make sure that you write it down properly. Simplify and confirm that you will only be left with those three factors. 4 minus lambda, lambda minus 3, and lambda plus 5, giving you the values for lambda, 4, 3, and negative 5. Please confirm that that's what you will get. Note what I've done here is to write a spectral matrix with the eigenvalues on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. It's a three by three matrix. So that means I'll have three rows and three columns in my spectral matrix. And note, I wrote them in order. So if your factors are, in the, are not in the same order as mine, say you have lambda minus three first and 4 minus lambda second and lambda plus 5 third, it means your lambda 1 will be equal to 3 and lambda 2 will be equal to 4 and lambda 3 will be equal to negative 5. We need to see that order here. The order of your factors and your lambdas will be the one that goes in the spectral matrix. So your lambda 1 will be in row one, your lambda two in row two, and your lambda three in row three. Now we have to find the eigenvectors that correspond to these eigenvalues. Note that in order for us to find the eigenvectors, that formula holds. It's the matrix A minus lambda I into vector K is equal to vector zero. So because I already have my A minus lambda I, which was given by that matrix, so I just multiplied it by vector K, which has got K1, K2, K3. Why? Because I've got three eigenvalues as well. 
so and then on the right hand side we'll have zero 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 substitute the first eigenvalue lambda equal to four in then you substitute it in there and then you simplify that step carries a mark where you substitute your eigenvalue in and do the correct um, calculations 1 minus 4 must be negative 3 4 minus 4 must be 0 negative 3 minus 4 must be negative 7 then thereafter you change your matrix format to equation format so you multiplying your vector k1 k2 k3 into the matrix so you'll have negative 3 times k1 plus 0 times k2 plus 4 times k3 that's what you get as my first equation and then the second equation 3 times k1 5 times k2 and negative 7 times k3 you add them up and equated them to 0 on the right hand side and that's what we got from there you do your simplification so the first um, equation gives me that k1 will be equal to 4 over 3 k3 so what we did is to let k1 be, be k3 be equal to 1 so that our k1 is equal to 4 over 3 and if we substitute k1 and k3 into the second equation you get k2 equal to 3 over 5 please confirm check that and confirm so now my vector k1 has got k1 k2 k3 k1 is 4 over 3 k2 3 over 5 and k3 is 1 but we have to get rid of the fractions so what do we do 3 and 5 have got an LCM which is 15 so you multiply each term by 15 we'll have 15 times 4 over 3 so 3 to 15 goes 5 times 5 times 4 that gives us 20 what we are trying to do is to get rid of the fractions in your eigenvectors so that you get whole numbers as your entries for your first eigenvector now i need you to do the same for the others you need to confirm that the second eigenvector will give you two zero one and the third eigen vector will give you negative two zero three and your modal matrix will be in that format note that the modal matrix must have the same order as the eigen values first eigen value gives you eigen vector that must be in column one second eigen value gives you an eigen vector that must be in column two and then the third one goes in column three please do the calculations and confirm these solutions now we want to use the properties of eigenvalues remember we had lambda 1 is equal to 4 that's what we're going to use lambda 1 equal to 4 lambda 2 equal to 3 and lambda 3 equal to negative 5 for our example so now here the exercise asked us to find the trace of a and we had to recall the trace of a is the sum of the Aiken values all you need to do add the Aiken values up and get an answer the next one note that we had been asked to use the detail the the Aiken values because you are given Aiken values so you cannot just use your calculator to find the a the determinant you need to use the formula that requires you to 
use the eigenvalues. And we had said the determinant of A, you can only get it by finding the product of the eigenvalues. So what we did, just multiply out the eigenvalues and we got negative 60. Then, then C, we are asked to find eigenvalues of A inverse. And we had said in the properties, in order for us to find the eigenvalues of A inverse, we just take the reciprocal of each eigenvalue of A. That's what we are getting. So that means for A inverse, we have 1 over 4, 1 over 3, and negative 1 over 5 as eigenvalues. Just directly from the eigenvalues of A, find their reciprocals. That's it. And then... D is asking us to calculate the determinant of A to the power negative 2. So here we find two properties. Now note that A to the power negative 2 is the same as A to the power negative 1 all to the power 2. Already you have the eigenvalues of A inverse. The determinant is found by multiplying or finding the product of the eigenvalues. So the square, remember we had said, if you are looking for the eigenvalues of a to the power k, it means each eigenvalue will be raised to the same power. So eigenvalues of a to the power negative 1, which is a inverse, are raised to the power 2 because of the question that says a did find the determinant of a to the power negative 2. Hence, you find that all our eigenvalues have been raised to the power 2, but because of the pro of the determinant, we are finding the product of those. So you can fill in um, the answer, the denominator of 1 what will it be? Now we go straight to matrix analysis. Now that we've done the introduction, matrix analysis, um, we just go straight to the state space representation of single input, single output systems, that is CISO systems. Here, we start with a differential equation, an nth order linear differential equation. That's where we start. That means it has constant coefficients. And it is a non-homogeneous differential equation because it's got u of t on the right-hand side. It can be, this differential equation can be represented as a state equation representing that particular system. And it will be of the form x dot equal to ax plus here we have the formula for the state equation x dot equal to ax plus b times u a is what we know as the system matrix that is the coefficient matrix x is the state vector. B is known as the input matrix, while U is known as the input function. Note that the state vector always contains all the information that we need to know about the behavior of that particular system. If now 
Note that this is the state equation. But then we have a state space model, which has got a state equation and the formula y equal to c transpose multiplied by the state vector, which is vector x. And we've been given that c transpose is 1, 0, dot, 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 0 all the time. And our y is the response or the output of the system. So if you are asked to write the state space model of the system, it must have the state equation as well as the response equation of the system. They must be there both of them. So let's do some examples to see how do we do this. Here are some examples. Note that we've been asked to find the state space representation. So it means you must have the state equation and the output equation. You must have both of them. So here is our non-homogeneous equation because we do have an input function on the right hand side which is e to the power negative t. It is linear because all our coefficients are constant. So the first thing we do is the change of variables. We start by saying y is equal to x1. We start by that change noting that the second term has got dy over dt so we have to change also the second term dy over dt will be equal to x1 dot which is the derivative of that x1 and then we let it be equal to x2 so y is equal to x1 x2 is equal to x1 dot the second derivative of y with respect to t, we change it to x2 dot, which we'll simply say it is equal to x3. Then we write this appropriately so that we can formulate the state equation. Remember, the x state equation must have x dot on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you must have a coefficient matrix A multiplying the state variables, which is x1, x2, x3, depending on how big our matrix is going to be, plus vector B, which is an input vector multiplied by the input function, which is U. That's where we want to go. And also, we must have a proper formula for our output, which is y equal to c transpose multiplied by the variables, which is the state vector. So let's see how we can do that. After we've changed these variables, then how do we move forward? In order for us to do that, firstly, we recognize that the highest derivative in that equation was the third derivative. And the third derivative will definitely be equal to x3 dot. Why? We had said the second derivative is equal to x3. So that means the third derivative is x3 dot. And how then do we find the formula? All we did was to let take everything in the original equation, we take it all the way to the right hand side. Note the order. y comes first, d over dt comes second, the sec second derivative of y with respect to t comes third, and then the input function comes last. Then we do the substitution. We said y is equal to x1, and we said d over dt is equal to x2, 
and we said the second derivative is equal to x3. And all of this are equal to x3 dot. So we formulate now the system. Remember, we had said x1 dot is equal to x2. So that means we have 0x1 and 0x3. x2 dot, we had said, is equal to x3. So we've got 0x1 and 0x2. Then our x3 dot, directly from up there, we take it all the way down. And we have 4x1 minus 2x2 minus 3x3 plus e to the power negative t. I'm hoping we are noticing that now all this system has got x dots on the left. On the right hand side, we've got equations which have got all of them. We've got x1, x2, and x3. So it means you can change this system of equations to matrix format so that it can meet the requirements of a state equation. Note, that's exactly what we did. The matrix format of that system, all the x dots are on the left in a vector. The coefficients of x1, x2, x3 for each formula, for each equation, and then we've got x1, x2, x3 vector. Note that this is a vector. This is a matrix A. And then we've got plus from each of the equations. We need to check what was the coefficient of e to power negative t. First equation, we did not have e, so we wrote 0. Second equation also did not have e, we wrote 0. The last equation is the only one that had the exponential function e and its coefficient was 1. So our B matrix is that one. Then we go to the very first equation, which was y is equal to x1. And note that there must be three variables. So that means it's 0x2 and 0x3. Write it in matrix format. So it means it must be having 1, 0, 0, multiplying x1, x2, x3, which is our state variables in the state vector. Now, one other thing that we need to note, the highest derivative in the difference, in the differential equation is the only one that determines how many variables we're going to have. Here in our example, the highest was the third derivative. We had d cubed y over dt cubed as the highest derivative. That determined that we'll only have x1, x2, and x3 as state variables. Here are some exercises that you can attempt. All of them are looking for the state space representation and note all steps are required. I can simply say, number one, you will have three state variables. Why? We've got the third derivative. We'll have x1, x2, and x3. In number two, you'll have four because the highest derivative is the fourth derivative. Attempt this and let's see what you will get. We move on to the solution of this state space equation. In order for us to solve um, this problem, we have to note, firstly, that we will always be given the state equation. Also, we'll always be given the initial conditions. 
and will also be given an expression for you. So um, there are two methods that I will be introducing. So let's start with the first one. According to the solution, here it requires the change of variables because even though the formula is in x dot equal to ax plus b times u, you have to change it to z dot equal to the spectral matrix multiplied by z plus b times u. Note that you need the spectral matrix in order to write out the formula. So we start by calculating the spectral matrix as well as the modal matrix. Why modal matrix? We needed to change our given B, our given small letter B to capital letter B because this is what will work for us. Here, this is not small letter B that is multiplying U. So that means we have to change our input matrix or our input vector. So we multiply the original input vector by the inverse of the modal matrix. Then afterwards, calculate the new input vector, which is capital letter B. Then afterwards, step three, write out now the formula for Z dot, noting that our Z also takes the format of X, which was X1, X2, even here, Z will be Z1, Z2. Once you've done that, then you can be able to calculate also the initial conditions in terms of Z. Note that everything we are given was in terms of X. We have to change everything to Z. So the initial conditions now change. Remember, in order for you to calculate capital letter B, you multiplied the original small letter B with M inverse. Now, in order for you to get the initial conditions, you multiply the original X conditions or your original initial conditions by M inverse. Then you'll have sorted everything out. What we do now afterwards, we solve for Z of T. Once you've solved them for, for Z1 and Z2, substitute the initial conditions to take care of the constants. And then we need one other thing that we need to note here. In our solution, we end up with first order differential equations. And they only are um, solved using the integrating factor or the direct method. So you need to know how to use the integrating factor. So in order for you to be able to use this method as a prerequisite, you need to revise how to solve first order differential equations using the integrating factor. Once you are done calculating Z1 and Z2, taking care of the constants using the initial conditions, then we need to solve the original equation. The original variables were X1 and X2. So the only way to solve that is to use the formula X is equal to MZ. X is equal to MZ. Then you will get the final solution. Now let's do some an example. Let's put this into action. 
and then we go to the second method. Here, the state equation has been given to us in terms of x. This method, method 1, requires a change of variables to z. But let's note first what are we given. This is a, our matrix a, and this is our vector b, and this is our u, and this uh, state uh, variables x1, x2, and on the left hand side we have x1 dot and x2 dot. Also, we have initial conditions, noting that the first one is x1 of 0, the second one is x2 of 0. Also, we are given the formula for our u. We are always given that the formula or the expression for our u. In this case, our u is a heaviside function, which is 0 for all the values of t less than 0 and 1 for all the values of t starting from 0 to, to infinity. So let's start with step 1, which requires that we need to get the spectral matrix. So please confirm that we have eigenvalues, lambda 1 equal to negative 1 and lambda 2 equal to negative 3, giving us that spectral matrix, which is negative 1, 0, 0, and negative 3. The next thing, we must find the modal matrix because we need it to get the capital letter B. So to calculate the Aiken vectors, I hope you still remember, it's the matrix A minus lambda I multiplied by vector K is equal to vector 0. And then you substitute negative 1 in that's what we got, and you need to confirm that everything is fine. So if we have k1 equal to negative 2k2 taken from the second row equal to 0, it means our k1 will be equal to 2 times k2. So we let k2 be equal to 1, that means our k1 is equal to 2. So the first eigenvector is 2, 1. Substitute again the second again vector, which is negative 3. We get that formula. Change it to matrix format and to, to equations, a system of equations from matrix format. We have 2k1 plus 0k2 equal to 0 and 1k1 plus 0k2 equal to 0. If we let k2 be equal to 1, then we'll know that k1 will be equal to 0. Note, it is 0 multiplied by k2. That does not mean k2 is equal to 0. Please note that, hence we said k2 will be equal to 1, so that our eigenvector is not a 0 vector. So k2 is 0, 1. So our modal matrix takes care of the fact that the first Aiken value gave us 2, 1. So 2, 1 goes into the first column. And then the second Aiken value got us 0, 1, which goes into the second column. Then we know that in order for us to get to step 2, we need M inverse. Then we need to check whether that is our m inverse. You can use your calculators to confirm that m inverse is given by that matrix. And then we have to go now to step two. We found the spectral matrix, we found m, and we found m inverse. S step two requires us to calculate capital letter B, which is equal to m inverse multiplied by the small letter B that was given in the problem. Our 
small letter b that was given in the original problem was 1 1 we do the multiplication and we get our capital letter b also we quickly change the initial conditions formula m inverse times the original initial conditions gives us again the same answer so our b in this case and our initial conditions have got the same formula then we go to the original to to the equation that has been changed from the original do the substitution spectral matrix is given we calculated it z is z1 z2 b we just calculated it it's half half and our u is just one from the heavy side function and left hand side z dot is z1 dot and z2 dot all you need to do now multiply as you can see z1 dot will be equal to negative 1 times z1 remember that you to be 0 times z2 and plus half that's why we get the first formula and then the second formula gives us z2 dot is equal to 0 times z1 and negative 3 times z2 plus half so we get the second formula and then these two must be written in standard formula this is very important very very important that we have to have it correct write it in the standard formula all the variables on the left hand side and the constant must be left on the right hand side variables on the left constant on the right so we have to have the standard formula for both equations as you can see both equations are first order differential equations which require us to use the integrating factor to solve them so let's go to the next steps here is the first equation that has got z1 dot the in integrating factor is the coefficient of z1 dt so it's e to the power integral of 1 dt which is the coefficient of z1 that gives us e to the power t and then to solve i'm hoping that we still remember is the integrating factor multiplied by z1 on the left equal to the integral of what we had on the right hand side multiplied by the integrating factor under the integral sign we know we'll get the same and then make z1 the subject so that means you divide through by the integrating factor and that's what we get now remember that we have our initial conditions that we've calculated they were half and half it means z1 of 0 is equal to half so what do you do into your z1 wherever there is t substitute 0 that is why we get on the right hand side half plus c1 and this gives us that c1 is equal to 0 and then we go to the second equation that has got z2 dot integrating factor the power of e is the coefficient of z2 so we've got the integral of that coefficient dt and that gives us e to the power 3t so again we do the same the solution is the integrating factor multiplied by z2 on the left equal to the integral of the term that was on the right hand side which is half multiplied by the integrating factor and i'm hoping that you still remember the integral of e to the power 3t is e to the power 3t divided by 3 
That is why we have that three times two giving us a six in that denominator. And then simplify, dividing by e to the power three t. Um, please forgive me for that mistake. It's e to the power three t, not t. So it's supposed to be three day. Then divide throughout by e to the power three t. We have one over six plus c two over e to the power three t. And then we go to the initial conditions because we want to take care of the constant c two. We have half equal to one over six plus c2 over e to the power zero. We know e to the power zero is one, and then we get our c2 to be equal to one third. Then it means we've solved our problem. Our z1, we go back to the formula. Our z1 was equal to half plus c1 over e to the power 0, e to the power t, and our c1 is 0, so that means it's just half. And then for z2, we substitute c2 to be 1 over 3, and that gives us our formula for z2. Now, the last step. Remember, you were not given z, you were given x variables. So we have to change to x variables. x is equal to mz. x is equal to mz. So let's do that so that we get the final solution. x is equal to mz. Our m is the modal matrix, which is given by that. Our z, in place of z1, we have half. In place of z2, we have 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 e to the power negative 3t that we got in the previous steps. Then what do you do? Simplify. x1 is equal to 2 times half plus 0 times this term. So that means we'll just have 2 times half, which is 1. x2, as you see, 1 times half, that's what you get there, plus 1 times that term, that's what you get. And then you simplify, removing the brackets, and that's the final solution. So our x1 is equal to 1, and our x2 is equal to 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3 e to the power negative 3 this is just using the first method. Now we have to go to the second method of solving these problems. The second method does not require a change of variables. We need to know that. The first one changes variables. X is equal to mz and b must be equal to m inverse times the small letter b and z of 0 must be equal to m inverse times x of 0. Here there are no change of variables whatsoever. So let's continue. Here you are given, again you are still solving the state equation and it is given in that format. You will always be given the initial conditions. You will always be given the formula for your x dot. And also an expression for u will be given. The solution is given by that formula. So our main focus is to make sure that we get all the terms that are in the formula. We have here e to the power a into t minus t naught 
I'm hoping that you remember that T naught is the initial time. Most of the time, our initial time is zero. Also, the vector x zero will be the initial condition. Under the integral sign, you integrate from the initial time to t. And you are integrating e to the power a into t minus tau. We change the variable there from t to tau. Ne? And our b, which is the same as the original b that we had, our u is still the same. But the only thing that has changed is the variable from t to tau. Now, how do we get this transition matrix, which we call e to the power a times t? The formula is given. First term will always be alpha naught multiplied by the identity matrix. The second term, alpha 1 multiplied by matrix A, the second term, alpha 2 multiplied by A squared. Note A is just the matrix that we had. And we continue until we get to N minus 1. And also note our alphas, they start from 0 to N minus 1. If we want to solve for the alphas, remember that with this is just e to the power a t is given by that formula. But now we need to figure out what is alpha naught, what is alpha 1, what is alpha 2. We are told that we solve them simultaneously using our eigenvalues. So our eigenvalues also come into play here. In order for you to be able to solve for the alpha naught, alpha 1, alpha 2, we need the formula e to the power lambda j times t equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 times lambda j to the power 1, alpha 2 to the power lambda j to the power 2, and so on until we get to n minus 1. Let's solve. Let us solve a problem and see the application. I'm hoping you're noticing all we want is to make sure we get that solution. Now, the solution had a formula like that but the power of e was a into t minus t naught now we need to look at the formula that we have our t naught because we've been told it's x of zero so our value for t naught is equal to zero that is why we have here t naught is equal to zero Therefore, the power of E, which is A into T minus T naught, becomes A into T minus 0, which is just T. Hence, we have E to the power AT. In place of X of T naught, we have now X of 0, our initial conditions. So what we are trying to find now, everything has been given. A has been given as our matrix. B, we have been given. U, we are told, is a heavy side function, which is just equal to 1 for all values of t greater than or equal to 0. We are trying to find the these terms that are in the solution. Note that when you simplify it, the first term is e to the power a t multiplied by x of 0. The second term is the integral of e to the power a into t minus tau, b, u of tau, and we're integrating with respect to tau. Now, 
what will be the formula for e to the power a t because we have a two by two matrix we'll only have two terms in the formula for e we go back to the formula for e that was given to us the first term it must be alpha naught times i the second term alpha one times a if a was a three by three matrix would have alpha two times a squared as the third term so two by two matrix we only have two terms alpha naught and alpha one and remember alpha naught multiplies i and alpha one multiplies a but then the challenge we are having we can't have the formula for e to power a t without knowing what alpha naught and alpha one are so let's use the formula that was given to us that requires us to have eigenvalues to solve simultaneously for the values of alpha naught and alpha one You can do the confirmation to check whether you'll get the same eigenvalues. Now the formula. Because we have a two by two system with two eigenvalues, we'll only have two terms in the formula for e to the power lambda j times t. I'm hoping that you're not confusing it with e to the power a t. e to the power a t alpha naught will be multiplied by i, alpha one will be multiplied by a. But now we're still trying to figure out what are the formulas or the expressions for alpha naught and alpha one. So the first thing we do, because you've got e to the power lambda j times t. So each value of lambda must be substituted. So when lambda one is called negative one into that formula, substitute lambda j is negative one. That's why we have e to the power negative t. In place of lambda j, again, in the second term, the value we have is negative one. That is why we have the first formula. lambda naught minus lambda one equal to e to the power negative t then when lambda two is equal to negative three where there is lambda j substitute negative three therefore we have the formula e to the power negative three t alpha naught no change there and in place of lambda j we have negative three that's why the second term is negative three alpha one now if we solve these two simultaneously i need you to confirm that you will also get alpha not equal to that expression and alpha one equal to that expression what worked for me was to say the first this is equation one and this is equation two and then i said equation one minus equation two to eliminate alpha naught so that i get alpha one only after getting alpha one substituted back in one of the equations to get alpha naught please do that and see whether you're going to get the same expressions now we go back remember here we only wanted the vet the expressions for alpha naught and alpha one after which we have to go back to the formula for e to the power a t substituting alpha naught and alpha one but firstly let's write these properly alpha one multiplies a matrix a has been given it's a two by two matrix so it goes without saying that alpha naught times i 
i the identity matrix will have the same size as matrix a so what i did was just to substitute i as a two by two because a is also a two by two remember you cannot add two matrices unless they have the same size so what i did was to multiply alpha not in remember when you multiply a matrix by a scalar each term must be multiplied by that scalar so i multiplied so i've got alpha not times one plus alpha one times negative one that's why i got the first term alpha not times zero plus alpha one times one gave me the second term in the first column alpha not times zero plus alpha one times zero that gives us the sec the first term in the second column alpha one times one plus alpha one times negative three that gives us the last term in the second column now what's left is to substitute the expressions for alpha naught and alpha one into our matrix so that we simplify e to the power a t here i did the substitution simplified it please check if you are going to get the same answers please so this is my e to the power a t the next step in the solution the first term is e to the power a t multiplied by x of zero and our x of zero was given to be one one i substituted did the multiplication and you need to check whether you're going to get your first term as that solution the next step is to find the integral simplify what's under the integral and integrate and then simplify because our solution has got this term e to power a t times x of zero plus the integral that has got e to power a t minus tau multiplied let's check multiplied by b multiplied by u of t so now we're simplifying each term so that we get the solution what i did was just to substitute remember the power of e now in place of t we've got t minus tau so that's what i did e to the power a t is what we had but wherever there is t we substitute t minus tau so i put that in brackets b was given to be one one u was given to be the heavy side function which is one for all the values of t greater than zero so i've got one there when you multiply these two the vector one one and that matrix you'll get that please confirm whether my solution is correct do the multiplication and then be careful of your addition and subtraction note that we have not yet integrated so the integral sign is still there and d tau is still there now we integrate we have to integrate each term note the best way to do this is to split that term e to the power negative t negative into t minus tau becomes e to the power negative t times e to the power tau you only integrate the term that has got tau that is why that answer is like that and then here 
this the first term in the second row is exactly the same as the first row so no change but the, la the last term note that tau is also multiplied by 3 so you have to divide by 3 then note to write your limits of integration 0 and t and we start by substituting t in first the higher uh, limit the upper limit must be in substituted first minus the substitution of the lower limit so please confirm when you substitute the upper limit if that's what you get and if you substitute the lower limit if that is what you get then you do the subtraction e to the power 0 minus e to the power negative t the second term minus the second term and simplify and that's what I got I got that expression multiplied by half in the second term becomes that and then I go back to my equation back to my equation substitute all the terms that I got we already had an expression for the first term and we already had an expression for the second term add them up and see if you're going to get those it means we've solved the problem x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 2 over 3 plus e to the power negative 3t over t note that both method 1 and method 2 are examinable so please make sure that you know how to use both methods here are the exercises that you can use to use both methods method one and method two check if you are going to get the same solution